what's going on, man what's up and welcome back to another video in today's video we got people who somehow survived freak accidents by dr mike i had i had seen this when i was scrolling down on my my youtube page and the thumbnail was like a picture of a pole through somebody's head and that's pretty crazy and, and i wanted and i wanted to see what what other things was in this video and whatnot but I hope that y'all enjoyed this one. If y'all do, give it a like. And oh, and um, the link to the original video is going to be down low in the description. So make sure y'all check that out if y'all want to check this out for yourselves. And let's go ahead and get into this one. Thank for sponsoring this right, beat. 17 years old from Lima to Pucallpa, Peru with her mother and... Julianne boarded lands okay. of flight 508 from Lima to Pucallpa, Peru with her mother and 90 other passengers. Only okay. 25 minutes into the you flight, the legs? plane began to violently shake as it entered a thunderstorm. Looking out the window in horror, Julianne saw a bolt of lightning strike the wing of the plane. Chaos oh. quickly erupted as the oh. plane began oh tearing gosh. apart. Julianne, who was Damn, still buckled to her it. seat, was ripped. Wow. Wow. What would y'all what was y'all doing if y'all was in this situation? Me personally, what I would do, I would take off my seat belt, right? I would get on top of the seats right here and I would ride it down, right? And right before I hit the ground, I would jump off the seats, do a triple backflip, and land straight on my feet and be perfectly fine. And that's how you would survive a plane crash with Ladari from the plane. She fell 10,000 feet through the sky into the dense Amazon jungle below. She remained strapped to a row of seats, which actually acted as a makeshift parachute and landed perfectly amongst the high canopy of the jungle, softening the crash. Concussed and rightfully traumatized by the disaster, Julianne laid motionless on the jungle floor for an entire day. When That's she came to, to she was alone life. in the rainforest, having Safety only sustained first, a broken collarbone, a sprained knee, gashes on her right shoulder and left calf. Julianne rose to her feet, found a bag of candy from the rubble, and proceeded to hike for 11 days until she was found by two loggers. Today, she is known Crazy. as Dr. Julianne. Julianne Diller, a prominent zoologist who has traveled the world, advancing the study of animal science and working in the same Peruvian jungle where she survived. So she if there's anything you should take away from this story, make her want to stay it's there. this. Wear your seatbelt. Phineas, Phineas Gage had a 13-pound metal pole blasted through his skull. And this survived. is the picture I seen. In 1848, then 24 year old Phineas Gage was working on a new railroad track in Vermont. His job was simple literally, just blow up rocks. One day, after placing a charge in a hole, he began packing sand with a tamping iron. When suddenly the iron caught something in the sand, probably a rock or a small piece of metal, and created a spark. This tripped mm. the charge and caused a massive explosion, with Gage standing directly on top of that blast. What happened next has been studied by doctors, myself included, for the last 150 years. The blast rocketed the iron bar oh. upward, penetrating behind- Oh! All right, all right, all right, all right. I know, I know I say some crazy shit, but let me tell y'all how I would survive this, right? So given that the spear is in his head, right? He didn't have enough time to react and move his head out of the way. So me, what I would do to survive this, I don't have enough time to clear my whole head, right? I'm going to tilt my head to the side. I'm going to let the spear go through here and through my cheek for a minimal head damage and not like this dumbass and he let it go straight through his head. That's crazy. Behind his left eye, entering his brain and then exiting through the top of his skull, oh, that's finally crazy. landing a full 80 feet away. When his fellow rail workers rushed over, they were immediately devastated and shocked to see he was still alive despite Ooh. a nearly two inch hole through his entire skull. That Not knowing how to crazy. help in this dire situation, the workers rushed him to a nearby doctor who was most definitely unprepared for such a gruesome injury. Despite Ooh. some initial convulsions, Gage never even lost consciousness. And in one crazy. of the most miraculous medical cases ever recorded, he survived. Crazy. For 12 years, but with one crazy. major caveat. 
You see, Gage is also considered a vital piece of medical history as he led us to start believing the brain was actually responsible for controlling personality. While Gage did survive the explosion, it's documented that damage to Ooh. his frontal lobe led his personality to go through some major changes. Dr. Harlow, who treated Gage following the accident, said he is fitful, irreverent, indulging at times in the grossest profanity, which was not previously his custom. Some who knew him have claimed it took him years to regain his personality. Reports over exactly how much his personality oh, changed have been the cause of much debate over the years, crazy. but regardless, surviving a metal pole flying through your skull is nothing short of a miracle. Thanks. Aaron Ralston cut off his own arm after being trapped by a boulder I've for 127 hours and survived nigga in my and got a movie made about him. While hiking alone in Utah, Aaron crash landed into a canyon and had his right arm pinned against a wall by an 800 pound boulder. Strategizing with few good options, he decided to wait and scream for help slowly drinking his limited water and eating his two burritos and chocolate bar. Unfortunately, as the days passed and nobody came, he began to get desperate. Drinking water turned to drinking urine and eating Ooh. his burritos turned to eating nothing. With no Ooh. help on the way, Aaron had to rely on only himself and take matters into his own hand. He took out the dusty dull blade in his multi-tool and began making his way through his own arm. The pain really was excruciating, but the pain quickly turned to panic as he realized his dull blade would never be able to get through the bones in his arm. That's when he realized he missed a primitive tool at his disposal. The boulder itself could be his way out. Through sheer force of will and he a rage that only comes off. after drinking oh your own gosh. pee for several days, Aaron used the leverage of the boulder to twist and break both the radius and ulna bones in his forearm. After withering away in a canyon for 127 hours, Aaron had removed his entire arm, created a makeshift tourniquet, and freed himself from his natural prison, allowing him to stumble out of the canyon where he was discovered by hikers. Aaron survived and today continues to travel the world, where he Real not nigga, only speaks man. about Shout his harrowing him. journey, but also navigates rivers, climbs mountains, and hikes canyons. Dr. Leonid Rogozov performed an emergency appendectomy on himself and survived. Mm, In the middle crazy. of the 20th century, Russia began aggressively exploring and conducting research in Antarctica, and in 1960 sent an expedition to construct a base known as Novolovarskaya. The team completed its construction in nine weeks and then had to wait out the winter until the ice thawed so they could be brought back home. Because the team was effectively stranded at the base, they brought along the doctor to ensure the crew could be treated for any illnesses or injuries if they were to arise. Tragically, Dr. Rogozov was the one who got sick. After suffering several hours of unrelenting abdominal pain, weakness, and nausea, Dr. Rogozov diagnosed himself with appendicitis, or inflammation mm. of the appendix that can cause severe pain and even death if left untreated. Knowing that there were no surgeons around, he reached for all possible conservative methods to address his situation. But unfortunately for the doctor, none of them were effective, leaving him with only one final choice. Surgical removal of his appendix, performed Ooh. by himself, on himself? He recruited two medical assistants, the team meteorologist and the team driver, to hold open the abdominal incision and hold a mirror to better visualize his surgical field. Seated upright in a hospital bed, taking as many sterilization precautions as possible, Dr. Rogozov began the operation. The pain and fatigue was excruciating, causing him to experience vertigo and take several pauses with his abdomen wide open. Nevertheless, he continued. He removed the perforated appendix and stitched himself back up over the course of just two hours. After four Man. days, Dr. Rogozov bowel function returned to normal. After five days, his fever was gone. After eight days, his stitches were removed. And after two weeks, he was back to performing heavy work on the base. What a champ. Real niggas, man. Michael Cassidy was split in half by a fire hydrant during a motorcycle crash and survived. The 25 year old was riding his motorcycle down the street when he unexpectedly lost control of his back wheel. At that moment, Michael knew he was gonna crash. So in a split second decision to mitigate damage, he veered in between two cars in the hopes of finding some grass. Unfortunately, Michael didn't see the fire hydrant hidden between the cars. His body flew full speed through the air directly into the oh, hydrant. When he came to, he was 
my, face my down, neck and his my legs back. Were face up. The hydrant had essentially split his pelvis in two, known as an open book fracture. This is essentially a death sentence in most scenarios. Fortunately, two off-duty nurses witnessed the brutal crash, immediately oh, rushing to his oh, aid and summoning oh. an emergency helicopter to get oh my gosh. Get let him me, to the nearest go, go summoning back. an emergency helicopter. Look at his legs. Bro, bro, imagine you 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 woke up one day, bro, and you look down at your legs and and instead of seeing your toes, you were seeing your heels, bro. That would be the craziest shit ever. Oh my gosh, you were seeing your butt instead of your meat. That would be crazy, bro. Oh. to get him to the nearest trauma center. Upon his arrival, doctors placed a special balloon catheter inside his femoral artery and slid it up near his aorta. Once inflated, this blocked blood flow to his lower half, reducing further blood loss and finally allowing doctors to get a good view of the damaged pelvis. It worked. Ooh. Multiple medical teams collaborated to repair his ruptured bladder, reconnect blood vessels, and oh. reconstruct his who, entire who pelvis with hardware and screws. After a month of physical therapy, Shout Michael now walks with a limp, passes waist through an ostomy bag, and he and his wife just welcomed their first child. Without a balloon catheter Shout to slow to the blood loss and a ton of blood transfusions, Michael wouldn't have made it. Receiving a transfusion can mean the difference between life and death when suffering a traumatic injury like the ones in these stories. That's why it's so important to get into the habit Yo, of giving. A single blood around. donation That's from just so one crazy. person can help save the lives of three people you can be that one person. As we head into the winter months, we tend to see donations decline because of the weather and holidays, which means donating now and becoming a recurring donor is so important. You can safely donate blood every two months. Blood donation blood can be getting a re- I'm not donating my blood, I'm sorry, doc. But I hope that y'all enjoyed this video. I'm not gonna lie, pretty crazy, like, now, now I have new, I have new unlocked feeders. Like I'm not going to ride a motorcycle. I'm never going to blow some shit up. Fuck it. Not taking planes no more. What else happened? I don't know what else happened, but I'm not doing nothing these niggas did in this video. But I hope that y'all enjoyed, man. If y'all did, leave a like, comment, subscribe, share, all of that good stuff. Turn the post notification bells on and I will catch y'all in an O. Oh, Peace, love, and positivity, and I will catch y'all in the next one, man. It's two options in this world. Is you gon' win or lose? Is you gon' take the risk or not? You know you gotta choose. Yeah, I can't keep one, so all my bitches come in twos.